I'm your host with the most local 23. You're joining me for Across the Void, Book 1, Chapter 7. Mark of the Lectra. Now playing as Nova. A tremor rocks the ship, and the alarm blares through the bridge. What's happening? Are we under attack? Sol quickly consults his data screen and turns pale. It appears the hangar bay has received a heavy amount of fire damage. Um, permeate the air shield to, to suck out the oxygen and extinguish the flames. And check the radar for any rogue fighters. No need. The damage is internal. Titani scolds, scowls and shoves away the emergency controls. I'd like to know, who was stupid enough to blow up the hangar bay? You don't want to know. On cue, Pax and Holmes burst onto the bridge. Uh, don't worry, Nerova. The fire's out. Yeah, due to soul. But the hangar bay's air shield is fried. You two were there? You blew up my ship! What were you thinking? You could have killed everyone on board. I'm sorry, Nova. We were just trying to help you figure out more about the Vanguard pilot. I get that you were trying to help, Pax, but you really did a number on the Atlas. I promise I'll fix this, but we need to land and buy a new... Gravitation nation? I don't know. Gravit... This is a word. Gravit... Gravitational stabilizer. We only need one part? L let's find somewhere to land that doesn't cause too much of a delay. On it, Captain! Pulling up our handy dandy map, could you not? Knowing you, you'll pilot us into a black hole. As home projects the map around you, the rest of your crew gathers around. Okay, there's the map. Looks like the closest play on it is Lectra. Perfect. Lectra manufactures parts for ships all over the galaxy. Plus, I get to show you where I grew up. Lectra it is. I'm open for some uh, personal tour, Kepler. Your knowledge of the planet will be helpful. A personal tour? I'm sure you can give me the true local experience. Kepler shoots you a wink. I'll show you everything there is to see. I'm counting on it. As you the map dissolves, you return to the captain's chair, nod. Set a course for Lectra. Already practiced for hyperspeed. Ready in three, two, one. It's so pretty, isn't it? It's pretty. Are we forced in this bloody thing? Lectra appears in the viewport, its atmosphere swirling with desert winds. Ah, so it's uh, kind of like Mars? There's home. I see your tat, where you get your tattoos glow. Lights are incredible. As you stare at the bright orange planet, soul clears his throat. <clears throat> Captain Laura, now that the crisis is averted, I must inform you, Lectra is governed by the Jura. So a Vanguard pilot wouldn't exactly be welcome there. You must take a choice. Or make a choice. Transfer her to Jura custody on Lectra, or calm a Vanguard escort before we enter the planet's orbit. You take a deep breath and let it out slowly. Alright, gather the remaining of the crew. They should know what I decide. I'll get our spy. Time to say good riddance to this threat once and for all. Moments pass as the rest of your crew enters the bridge. Zania, Meridian, Corvus, Argo, Eos, and Zaki all join you. And Kepler returns with Hezzy in her muscular grip. As all of you know, it's part of my job to ensure the Atlas isn't dragged into the Civil War. The Vanguard spy we rescued must be released on the proper authorities to to the proper authorities to prevent that from happening. You let your eyes linger on each of your crew members as you weigh your options. I've decided to turn Hezzy over to the Jorah or turn Hezzy to the Vanguard. Huh. 
Well, this one's a tough one. Well, okay. So let's real quick think about this. Um, Hezzy had high-grade weapons on her ship, right? So she knew what she was getting into. She knew what she was doing. And she went and killed a bunch of people. Hmm. So I have a choice to turn her over to the vanguard, which she's just going to go back killing people, or do what's right. Okay. Dozens are dead. She needs to face a court and be held accountable for her actions. Blood drains from Hezzy's face, right, before it twists into a mask of anger. You think you know what war turns you into? I did what I had to do. Take her back to the control room, Kevlar, until we can hand her off to a juror representative. You got it. Kevlar leads Hezzy off the bridge, leaving you with the rest of the crew. Titani and the Meridian look uncomfortable while Sol gives a slight nod. You can't make it how Zania, Argo, and Corvus feel. I'm uh, disappointed, Noah. I didn't think you'd make this choice. I'm sorry, Eos, but this was the best solution. I understand, but I can't respect a decision like that. That's because your vanguard shut up. Eos leaves with Zeki in tow. You did the right thing, Nova. I knew you'd think the juror de deserve justice. Or in for war crimes. I hope I made the right decision. V, hovering over your shoulder, gently bumps against your cheek. You did your best. That's all that matters. You're programmed to say that. Shut up. What is true? You let out a breath. You didn't know you'd been holding and get ready to land. You could literally kill someone and V'd be like, You did your best! <laughs> I can see it. You're about to step on your legs for surface for the first time when a familiar voice reaches your ears. Why have we landed on this truly uninspiring rock? The Atlas had an engineering malfunction. We're just making a short stop on Lecture to fix it. But for how long, dear? I'll have you know Matara's peace talks were already pushed back for the Senator and the Epoch Prince. <sighs> we'll never make it in time. Not to mention, this isn't the best place to pick a, for a detour. Do you know how terrible dust is for Seld's complexion? I don't give a shit about your dragon. I understand. But... Try not to insult the actor. It's only for a few hours, I promise. Our chief engineer only needs to find one part to get us underway again. I'm sure it will won't take her very long. I hope not. I can already feel my skin chafing from those arid desert winds, and what about poor Wurin? Oh. oh, put on some moisturizer, Adara, and wrap Wurin's windbreaker. We'll have to make do. Uh, you guys realize we're not on the planet yet, and we're still in space. And even then, the ship filters, it's just never mind. Just these people are idiots. With a huff, the passengers start down the ramp of the ship, and you follow close behind. Mm. Welcome to Cyberpunk 2047? What? I'm, I'm serious. It kind of gives me that vibe. In the city, you find Kepler waiting for you, her fiery hair whipping in the wind. Welcome to my homeworld, Cap. There's so much to see. I could spend a whole day in a market like this. You hear the passengers complaining as they wander by the stalls, and you sigh. But I've got to find a way to keep the passengers entertained before they start an intergalactic incident. You're lucky. You came here with me. I've got an exclusive access to the sacred path of the goddess. Uh-huh. I would say something, but that would be very unclassy. So I'm going to keep it to myself. That sounds amazing. We should go. 
Well, we gotta convince my mom. She's the guardian of Cassia, and no one gets on the path without her approval. Gaplar slowly looks you up and down. Oh, but of course, because it's the way you're dressed. And the way you're dressed, well, let's just say the Lectra aren't fan of outsiders. You've got to prove your respect, our planet. What am I supposed to wear, then? Appropriately summoned, V flights up and begins to spin in a circle above your head. I'm here for you, Nova! Step into my workspace! It's makeover time! With the look I've created, you'll look like a local, Nova. Stylish and classy. How is this a fucking local? Congratulations, we put more emphasis on her boobs. That's literally it. That's fucking literally it. Oh my god, and you look so geeky with the fucking hat and the dress. No. No. That at least looks normal. Like, I'm serious. Like... Hi, we put emphasis on boobies. We got it. Uh, where are your everyday clothes? I'm okay looking more cyber than Lectra today. Well, it may be in your closet if you ever want to look at it again. Your virtual closet dissolves, returning you to the vivacious Lectra market. Staying true to yourself. I like it. I'm sure we can impress my mom some other way. I mean, I sure as shit don't see you wearing the outfit. You wanna wear it? You wanna wear it? And I'll have you to coach me through it. Kaplar hooks a thumb between behind her suspenders and smiles. Woman's literally wearing suspenders. And I'm the, f I'm the fashion freak here. I can't wait for you to meet her. She taught me everything I know. Well, she must be extraordinary. Just let me tell the passengers to browse the market for a little bit while we talk to her. Quickly inform the passengers and then catch up with Kepler. As soon as you knock on the door, Kepler's mother opens it to reveal a cramped but cozy home. I mean, okay, and I'm, and I'm supposed to afford a dress. Alright, to impress this. Hello, I'm Captain Alar... Where you can salute, Kepler rushes past you to wrap her mother in a huge hug. Hi, Ma. My little Leoka. I'm so thrilled to see you. Uh, Leoka? It means little Lionheart. When she lived here, Kepler was considered a bit of a hero. A few years after the war, I... A gang came through the town and tried to draft the survivors, but Kepler led a charge to drive them off. We were still recovering. Someone needed to stop them. Kepler's mother places a hand on Kepler's shoulder, then returns her gaze to you. How many times do you need to say Kepler in the same damn sentence? I should introduce myself. I am Janus, the guardian of the temple of the goddess Cassia. Um... It's great to meet you, Janice. Your home is, uh, quaint. Thank you for letting me visit. Um, I see where Kepler gets her looks from. Mmm. Let us try flattery. You're both gorgeous. Oh! Janice and Kepler burst out in a, a laughter. Let me guess, she's adopted? We're not biologically related, but you're right. We are both knockouts. At least I am trying flattery. I just thought, oh, it's not the first time we've tripped someone up. Don't worry, Captain Alara. Kepler turns to her mother and gleam in her eye. Uh, the cab and I were hoping you'd uh, have time to take her and some of the passengers to see the sacred path. That's why you're here? You brought strangers to see the path? Kepler, the path is to be protected. You know this. Uh, of course, but we can share its importance with others to help them understand our culture, and... The temple is a representation of our holiest values, Kepler. The path is for those committed to their Lectra roots. Oh, I know that I'm not from Lectra, Janus, but I hope I can convince you I'm taking this seriously. Let me guess, she looks you up and down and takes in your outfit. Janus smoles over your words, and a look of determination appears on her face. 
We must decide if you can handle the journey. The goddess is picky about who gets to walk her path. More like you're picky. It's a hard hike. Because Cassie appreciates hard work. Tell me, what makes you a hard worker? Well, I haven't had a day off in... Well, my whole entire life. How's that? Well, I've worked my whole life to be a captain. I think leisure is just as important. I'm not looking to impress anyone. I never compromised that dream. I kept working towards it, no matter what it cost me to get it. You clearly have achieved what you work for. That shows dedication. Um, well, it's been even more rewarding than I imagined. Janice taps her chin as she thinks over a new question. Okay, those who walk the path usually seek something. A blessing, enlightenment, self-reflection. I was hoping for a million dollars. What do you hope to achieve on the path, Captain Alara? Uh, 10,000 subscribers? 100,000? A million? What? <laughs> <laughs> Something? Ah, uh, inner peace. I don't know. Get my passengers to leave me alone. Become a better version of myself. Learn more about the Lectra. Part of my responsibility as the captain is discovering all I can about your culture while I'm here. After all, this is where my new security cheat officer is from. Smooth talking your way through this. Not bad. I can see why Kepler is so taken with you. And I'm gonna see her temple of the goddess later. I mean, what? My crew means the galaxy to me. Well, Ma, did she pass or what? I would hope so. She did answer the questions appropriately. The goddess will grant her passage, more like you will. You talk your way onto the path. Charmed, I'm sure. Uh, thank you, Janice. This is a great honor. Janice frowns as something occurs to her. Uh, before we leave, I must remind you, we will not be entering the temple. Only those with the mark of the goddess can do so. What if I gave Nova the mark? Then I could show her around the temple no problem. You want me to get a golden tattoo like yours? Yeah, it'll look great on you. Kepler leans over and powers up a data screen on the counter. This is what it looked like. I'd go near the center of your body where we draw our strength. Okay. So basically, if we're going from the center of our body... Look! This tattoo's gonna be around your boobies, and this part's gonna go down your waist, and... Oh, what? It's beautiful. Kepler leans towards you, and spiritually, her breath tickling your skin. Plus, my mom could uh, give the passengers a tour while uh, I show you the inside of the temple. Oh, my. No, 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 I want to see what the tattoo would look on me. Don't tease me. Don't do that. Stick to the path inside. I can't stop with these puns, okay? I should stay with the passengers. They have a knack for causing trouble. I hear you. But, uh, it'll be nice just to show you the path. Let's collect those passengers I've heard so much about. You follow Janice out into the harsh climate to gather the passengers from the marketplace. Wind whistles through the canyon as you follow the glowing pillars leading the way to the temple. It's so peaceful out here. It's said that the goddess Cassia speaks to us through the wind. If you listen closely enough... Ooh, Janice is interrupted by a Dora complaining loudly behind you. The wind is terrible! It's blowing sand everywhere! Then why'd you come? The sand is irritating Warren's sensitive skin. He's in a state of utter distress. Yeah, he looks very distressed. I take him and grab him by the tail and beat him against a rock. How distressed will he be? Well, sand is a natural exfoliant. Uh, try not to think about it. Be careful not to get it in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, we're doing it. Every time you talk, you're taking a risk. Are you asking me to simply suffer in silence? My Adara is quiet for no one. 
Oh, if only. Lucky the Atlas has water that picks that'll help you get grit out of your teeth. You're hurrying ahead to catch up with the Kepler, then fall into step beside her. Did you used to come here a lot growing up? Almost every day, I'd help my mom maintain the temple and clean up the path. Clean up what? It's all sand. What exactly do you clean? Like, do people litter? Like, leave, like, cans of coke around or something? It's so sweet that you did that with her. I loved it. I got to spend time with her and hear stories about the goddess. I've missed spending time inside the temple. As you round the corner, the canyon opens up to reveal a large temple floating in the desert sky. Hi, we've played a lot of World of Warcraft, apparently. It's remarkable. When I was a kid, I came up with a poem to try to impress the goddess. I say it every time I saw the temple. Is it praise Cthulhu? Can I hear it? Kevlar puffs up her chest in pride as she begins to recite it. Goddess Cassia, we work until our hands are rough and move forward when times are tough, living by your light so others may have enough. You came up with that as a kid. Sounds like you've always been adorable. Yep, we're doing it. I get that a lot, but it's even better hearing it from you, Cap. I'll try not to let it uh, go to my head. Passengers emerge from the canyon behind you, stepping out to get the full view of the temple. Extraordinary. Hmm, I've never seen anything like it. This is even better than the hologram version. It reminds me of my favorite floating jewels. I guess this trek wasn't completely useless. <sighs> Shouldn't you be bitching about the sand again? Everyone gather around. Janice has offered to provide us with the history of the temple. As your happy passengers circle around, you look up and wonder what mysteries are hidden within the temple walls. Cthulhu. <laughs> now playing as Pax. You and Holmes wade your way through the busy city streets of Lectra until you reach a market field with an assortment of strange contraptions for sale. Yes, we've seen this twice now, thank you. We'll have no problems finding what we need to fix the Atlas here. It's a matter of bartering with the right trader. I hope you're right. After what I did to the hangar bay, I, I want to prove I'm worth keeping around or leaving you on the planet. I wouldn't worry about Nova. Luckily for you and me, she's very forgiving. Hmm. Holmes looks around as you examine a star map sewn together from flectrum and glimmer shells. The materials they use here uh, make no sense. The Lectra have never had the resources to buy the kind of tech you see in other parts of the galaxy, so they improvise with what they can here. Uh, sounds like you admire them. Well, there may be anyone who thinks outside their credit account. It's not easy to make something out of nothing. Hmm. I wouldn't say nothing. Yeah, I'm gonna go with credit account. Oh, I do that all the time at the sweets parlor. Soon the two of you come to a plaza dominated by towering display screen. Hundreds of devices and parts are listed along with the seller's prize. I think I see the gravity. God damn this word! It's it's called gravitational stabilizer and another thing. That's why I keep getting stumbled when I read the word gravity. Gravitational stabilizer. You're, you're taking from one sci-fi TV show and you're incorporating it and it's triggering the shit out of me right now. If we have that, uh, repairing the bay would be a cinch. Perfect. Does it say how much? I literally had my eyes closed reading the word, I'm serious. Uh, 7,000 credits or better offer? What? That's way more than we have. Sounds of a familiar voice shouting draws your attention to a miniature race track built out of scrap metal. A large crowd surrounds the track with all eyes fixed on the action below. Is it Anakin and a pod racer? What are you doing, Gemma? 
Stay on the track, you lazy good for nothing. Uh, what's he doing here? I was hoping to never see that cell again. As a group of small creatures weaves to reach the finish line, the cell shakes his arms angrily at an adorable ang animal who has paused to admire Dynamo's jeweled headdress. headdress. Ooh. Oh my god, you are fucking adorable. Oh wow, look at her. That little fluff ball. She's so cute. I like the big tail. I wonder what species she is. Who gives a shit? I want one. Maybe something native to Electra. I've never seen anything so adorable. Watch as the other animals all reach the finish line while Gemma spreads her wings and swoops up to a nearby fire escape. Get back here this instant, or I'm leaving you here to fit for yourself. If you don't race, you're of no use to me. With another beat of her wing, she ascends to a balcony overlooking the plaza. Heavy your way, you can die out here for all I care. Bah, Gemma whimpers but refuses to move. Oh my god, you're fucking adorable. Speaker of the racetrack scoreboard lets out a warning sound. The next race will begin in five minutes. Please get all competitioners into place. Uh, Carson, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> Holmes, let's... You turn to find Holmes, but he's nowhere in sight. Holmes? Here, I figured out we're gonna pay for the part. I placed a bet on one of the racers. Hmm, how much did you bet? All of it. 4,000 credits. I wanted to make sure we have more than enough to buy the stabilizer. Oh, God. It's just... He's an idiot. He's an idiot. You bet it all. I just hope you know what you're doing. I don't worry. This is gonna work. On your mark. Get set. Go! Animal springs into action, scrambling down the track. Which one did you bet on? A ferocious-looking beast right over there. Bella Holmes's outstretched finger to a small round tank where a baby kraken floats. Doesn't seem to be participating in the race. Oh, Cthulhu, kneel before him. Um... <laughs> Holmes, he isn't even moving. Sailed over here, she went last. <laughs> Your glorified doorstop hasn't budged. The race belongs to my Trilloraptor. Sailed points to the front of the pack, where a scaled animal with pointed talons is taking the lead. Meanwhile, the Kraken contentedly blows bubbles. Hail <laughs> Cthulhu. I don't think he's going anywhere. The other animals begin to approach us the final turn, the Kraken reaches his tentacles out of the water and snakes them around a nearby railing. I don't understand. The Kraken was rolling his tank around the really fast earlier. <sighs> we can't repair the hangar bay without the stabilizer. Nova's gonna flip. I can't lose my job on the Atlas. I hope you do. Kraken lets out a battle cry using his tentacles as a slingshot to launch himself in the air. <laughs> and fly across the finish line ahead of the Trilla Raptor. Don't you dare underestimate Cthulhu! Congratulations to the crack and all bets on the winner receive triple returns! What? This is outrageous! He wasn't even moving when the race started! No use crying about it. We won fair and square. While Holmes collects the 12,000 credits, the sale turns on you with a sneer. You'll pay for this. You've messed with me for the last time. Cell storms away, growling at the Kraken, who's back to merrily somersaulting in his tank. <laughs> Holmes skips back over with a bag of credits in hand. We did it, Pax. No, Cthulhu did it. Um, I guess he has a love interest for Pax. <sighs> Even though he's a fucking idiot. You happily wrap your arms around Holmes, his cheeks flush red. Okay, I might have doubted the Kraken would win, but I never doubted you. Uh-huh. Oh, uh... 
Dallas is lucky to have such a resourceful navigator. Do you believe this much shit that comes out of your mouth, or is it just me? You really think so? That means a lot, Pax. Of course. You made this mission as light and easy as a piece of merriment pie. Mmm, pie. Reminds me of, uh, I still want, need to get dessert. A couple of minutes later, you and Holmes have obtained both the stabilizer and a large portion of Flun Crisps, which float between you on a small hover disk. This is one of the reasons why I gave him the voice of Maxwell, because he's an idiot. I can't wait to eat these! Yep. As you pass the racetrack on the way back to the Atlas, a plaintiff craw sounds out from above. Jamma gazes down at you, pleadingly from the edge of a rooftop. I think she's trapped up there. Poor thing. The cell really did abandon her. What should we do? Oh, come the f*** on right now! <sighs> Climb up and a helper. Rescue and adopt a pet. It's like... A merger between a bunny and a bird. I'm confused. Oh, God damn it. Oh. Oh. Eh, this hurts me. Hold on, wait, 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 thinking, thinking, hold on, hold on. Shh, shh, shh. <sighs> Fine. Bloody hell. Mm, I'm rubbing my eyes right now. Why did I do this to myself? Mm, okay, moving on. We've got to get her down safely. You squint up at a series of fire escape landings leading to the roof. Hang on, Gemma. We're coming. Mom? Holmes straps the gravitational stabilizer to his back and starts climbing up the first ladder with you close behind. The shover disc continues to float beside him, bearing its pile of flun crisps. Sir's gonna have to wait a little longer. I'm sure it'll be worth it. Besides, this shouldn't take much... You're nearly at the top of the ladder when it suddenly comes loose. Ah. As the ladder tears with you on top, Holmes reaches down for your hand. Pax! Jump up, call out, grab on. Wheeling backwards, you barely manage to clasp Holmes' hand as the ladder gives out. His wry frame is surprisingly strong, and he hoists you on the landing with ease. The two of you reach the top of the fire escape. Won't be much longer, little fluffball. As you both walk over, Gemma skitters closely, eyeing you curiously. Mow -wow. Hi, cutie pie. I'm gonna pick you up, okay? Mow -wee. You crouch down, Gemma suddenly spreads her wings and launches at your face. Let her lick me. Dodge out of the way. Grab her. We grab her and throw her off the rooftop. Emma rushes up and begins happily laughing at your face with her lavender tongue. Okay, okay, easy. Looks like you made a new friend. Ohm strokes Gemma's back. She seems to calm down a bit and sits herself at your feet. Back on the ship where I uh, grew up, I had a zoomie that would jump up on my shoulders whenever I walked in the door. You have animals on the Psygog ship? Well, uh, the ones we built. Rita was so eager to play, I, I even taught her to organize my toolbox for me. With a wry grin, Holmes grabs a fun crisp and, from his hover disc and passes it in front of Gemma's nose. You know any tricks, Gemma? Her eyes light up at the mention. She spins in excited circles, eyeing the treat hungrily. <coughs> Gemma? Somersault. Gemma promptly launches herself into the air, rocketing upward. She falls back down to the rooftop. She tucks her head towards her belly and 
completes three full rotations before aligning gracefully. Nice acrobatics! My brother can't maneuver like that! Good job! There you go! Gamma descends on a fun crisp and with total abandon munching happily. <laughs> Wait a second. Something attached to her collar! You find a medallion with an infoglyph and begin scanning it for details. Probably a name. It says Unit 520RX7. Test subject owned by Pan Galactic Laboratories. PGL was a bioengineering manufacturer. They were shut down for black market trading. Poor thing. She's lucky she made it out of there. I didn't see any others like her in the city. She's probably designed from the cells up. Lean down and ruffle the back of Gemma's head. Don't you have anyone to go back to, sweetie? <coughs> I see. Well, you're gonna have a home on the Atlas now. And no one will force you to race or do anything else, okay? <coughs> Little fuzzball nuzzles her nose in your hand affectionately. The cell called her Gemma. Should we rename her? Okay, I'm thinking. <laughs> I guess keep it the same. I guess. Her name is Gemma, and we're her new family. It's settled. We forgot we're not allowed to have pets on Atlas. Are you... Bro, we have a literally goddamn dragon on the fucking ship. Are you serious right now? You really are an idiot after blowing up my hangar bay. I'm mad at you still. What command doesn't know what won't hurt them? Well, I'd be glad to help take care of her. She really reminds me of my Zumi. As Lectra's twin sons descend towards the cityscape, the three of you take the moment to sit and enjoy the view. My family didn't have pets growing up, but I used to love playing with the Navaria birds at the park. Uh, why didn't your family want pets? Well, I guess I didn't act exactly responsible. Wouldn't have worked. Why? My parents, parents barely had time for my siblings and me. But that's, uh, cyber for you. Ah, uh, that's too bad. Rita Maizumi made me, uh, made being a kid on Cygog ship uh, a lot more fun. This guy's, like, named, like, 16 pets thus far. I bet living on a cramped ship was hard while you were young. Uh, Rita was the unofficial mail courier of a Cygog. She could get places faster by climbing around on the ceiling. Once I even got her to deliver a... a Gizzle pop drink across the entire ship to the stewardess quarters. Uh oh. Gizzle pop. No, no, I didn't screw up. Shh. Gizzle pop doesn't like being shaken. Yep. And, uh, when she got there, she opened it. Security came running to investigate what they thought was a hull breach. That was the last gizzle pop we were allowed to have on the ship. Uh, just for the story, I'm going to buy you a bottle as soon as we get back. No one knows my screwed up. Good. Was it hard leaving Rita behind when you came to the Atlas? Ah, Psygog was her home for so long that it seemed better for her to be there. Well, it was your home, too. Do you ever think about going back? I don't know. I feel like the Atlas is where I'm meant to be, not Psygog. It's, uh, where I've been the happiest. Don't worry. You're gonna be finding a new home real soon, Holmes. Holmes glances furtively towards you and offers you a flun crisp. You accept the pastry with a smile. I guess that's the luxury life. Not too bad after all. 
Once the second sun finally drops beneath the horizon, the two of you begin making your way back down with Gemma in tow. After the repairs are done, don't be surprised if you end up getting promoted rather than fired. Oh, not on my watch. His ass is getting demoted, then fired. Someone bumps into you as you move along the streets. Sorry. The Romley slips something in your pocket, then disappears into the crowd before you can say anything. Uh, Holmes, I think he just... Got yourself off as you feel the raised markings on the small ship, the etchings of a familiar symbol. Uh, you okay? He sure was, uh, in a hurry. Yeah, I'm just eager to get back. Uh-huh, you're hiding something. Later that evening, the hangar bay once again has a functional airlock and gravitational field. With the patch repairs done, you send Holmes to dinner, then pull out the message chip to see what's on the other side. A map of the Atlas? You follow the map over to the stack of large crates shoved against the far wall of the hangar bay. A shadow flickers across the nearest crate. Is someone there? A figure steps into the light. Hello again, Pax. I see you're still loyal to the Jura. I made a promise. I'm not about to go back on that now. Uh-huh. Boy. How anticlimactic. Initial status report. Allegiance. Jura. Atlas. Minor damage. My ass. He blew up my goddamn hangar back. Crew. Moderate morale. Passengers. Cheerful. Have you met half these passengers? The hell they are cheerful. Two of them constantly complain about wind and sand. The dragon just sits there going, Oh, God, help me now. Oh, God, help me now. I didn't know what to name the little bunny dragon thingy fly. Whatever the hell it is. <laughs> I don't know what the hell. Oh, it's okay. It's, it's a bunny flying thingy, okay? It's adorable, though. <sighs> so with that being said, I hope you all did enjoy the video. Remember to please like and share the video. Subscribe if you're not already. Head down to the description below. Links to social media, our Discord, where you can come join, hang out, chat with all of us. Um, funny enough, this week we've had uh, several times we've hanged out in voice chat where you can hang out with me as well as many other fans and you get to chat with one another. If you don't, if you're not fond or shy of voice chat, don't worry. You can come join and just lurk. You can also lurk on my uh, streams. We do it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for choices. And then we also do it on, um, you know, after choices, before choices, etc. on those days, as well as any other days where we streamed. Um, last month, I streamed 28 out of 30 days, just FYI. So, yeah, there is quite a bit of content to absorb, and uh, we have a lot of fun. So, without further ado, thanks for tuning in, and I hope to catch you guys in a stream or the next video. Peace.